Hey everybody, good morning. It's Pastor Aaron with That Church, and we are here to talk about Acts chapter 16 key points, meaning what are the key points? What's the what's the takeaways in this chapter? And if you enjoy studying verse by verse, check out our teachings that we posted earlier today. Those go verse by verse and talk about everything. But this video today, we're going to talk about key points. What's most important that, that God was showing us in these, these chapters. So let's pray first and we'll get right into the word. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity this morning to be together in your word. Lord, there's no place I'd rather be right now than to be in your presence, which we are always, and to be in your word, listening to the Holy Spirit speak to us as we read your word and as we see what you're telling us for today, how we are to be prepared for today. So I thank you for giving us utterance, and I ask God that you help those that hear to hear clearly from you what you're telling them today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so we are on Acts chapter 16 today, and I know you're used to seeing Pastor Steve, but you get Pastor Aaron today. Isn't this exciting? It is for me. Always exciting to share God's Word. So as Pastor Steve always does, we're going to do a little review on chapter 15. And I'm so excited that I've seen kind of a flow here. And it's really the Holy Spirit, which we know that in the book of Acts in general. Anyway, that's when the Holy Spirit really comes big on the scene. But I was looking back at 15 to do a review and into 16 and there's so much about listening to the Holy Spirit. So in chapter 15, um, verses 8 and 9, we're talking about God being acquainted with us and understanding our hearts. And it says in verse 8 that he gave them the Holy Spirit. And in verse 9, in the book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 9 says that he, God, made no difference between us, between us and them, between Jews and Gentiles. And we can take that to, to our today. Our today might not be a group of Romans and a group of Jews and a group of Gentiles and a group of Pharisees, but there are a lot of groups here. And you know, God makes no distinction. He loves each one of us the same, which is very exciting. And so we don't have to give in to those thoughts of, I'm not good enough, or I'm not his special person. You are most definitely his special person, his special child, and he loves you a lot. And he's given you the Holy Spirit, so let's see some benefits of having the Holy Spirit in our lives. Uh, and then in verse 39, it was talking about the guys that, that were in this chapter and how they had a sharp disagreement. And so they made a decision out of that sharp disagreement. But we want to be encouraged to make our decisions based on the leading of the Holy Spirit. Not a sharp disagreement. Not a disappointment. Not the circumstances around us. Those are not the things that, that we should be making decisions based on. We should totally be making our decisions based on the Holy Spirit. And that is very important. That is key. Because we want to ask him, you know, like, let's say we're in the middle of this sharp disagreement and one of the people with us has has disappointed us or not shown up when they're supposed to or wanted to go their own way. That's when we ask the Holy Spirit, okay, so do we just stay in peace and let them go their way? Or do we stomp off and go our own way? Holy Spirit, what are you showing me? And maybe he did show them that, you know, it's best that you go your own way and let him go his own way and things will work out. But it just points out so distinctly that they were in a sharp disagreement. And it's important that we don't let that be what makes our decisions for us. So going into chapter 16, we again see the Holy Spirit so much. But um, since this is key points, we're going to get to the just the key points. We're not going to read every verse. But I like in verse 1 how it's talking about Timothy's mother. And it says that she was convinced that Jesus is the Messiah. 
Are you convinced that Jesus is the Messiah? And how do we become convinced? We read the Bible, we see the evidence, and we meditate on it. Now, you could meditate on, oh, but the world says he isn't. Um, some of the Jews says the Messiah hasn't come yet. So we have to choose. What are we going to meditate on? Those thoughts are what the Bible says. And I'm going to choose what the Bible says because I know that's the truth. Even if I don't understand it, I'm going to meditate on it and talk to God about it and believe it. And the Holy Spirit's going to give witness inside me constantly that what his word says is true. So I love that she was convinced. And it also says in verse 1 that she yielded obedience to him. That's, that's an act of our will. That's, that's deciding, making a decision to yield your obedience to him. Not obeying your flesh, not obeying your feelings when you have a sharp disagreement, but obeying God, yielding your obedience to God and his word. That's like making a decision. Whatever I see in this word, I'm going to do it before you even read the word. And then when you come across a verse such as, Oh, no man, anything but to love him. You've already decided you're going to obey the word of God. That doesn't mean you're condemned. I, I'm in debt. Probably some of you are in debt. That doesn't mean you're condemned that you're in debt. But you endeavor to get out of debt so that you can be obedient in a fuller way to God's word. And so I love that she yielded obedience to him. And that's, that's what I endeavor to do too. So I want to be like Timothy's mom. I want to be like Jesus. <laughs> okay, and then verse 5, I really like this. Because Paul and the apostles, the people that were traveling with him, they obeyed and they went to places they were supposed to go. It says in verse 5 that the churches were strengthened and made firm in the faith, and they increased in number day after day. That would glorify God, don't you think? And isn't that what we want to do is glorify God by helping other people? They were obviously helping people in their travels and in their preaching because the churches were strengthened. So the key point out of that is we want to listen to the Holy Spirit. We want to be where we're supposed to be, saying what we're supposed to say, doing what we're supposed to do to strengthen and make firm and encourage people's faith. They had to be led by the Holy Spirit for that. And then... Um, Verse 6, it, it really puts it together. Paul and Silas passed through, through the terry of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the word in the province of Asia. That doesn't mean that God didn't love Asia and didn't want Asia saved or the gospel preached to them. It meant the time wasn't right for that place. Perhaps they didn't have ears to hear yet. We don't know. But by them not going to Asia, then they were available for where they were to go. So if God tells you no, it probably means I have somewhere better for you to be. So listen. And then um, let's see. He protects you. The Holy Spirit protects you and gets you to the right place. So it's not always just don't go this way because harm might happen to you. Oftentimes it's go this way because I have something really good for you. And I have people there that are asking for you. So let's see, um, we're going to go to verse 14. Um, one of those who listened to us was a woman named Lydia. The Lord opened her heart and she paid attention to what was said by Paul. And you know, she was blessed because she paid attention to what was said by Paul, but she knew it was coming from God. So it's not just man we're listening to, it, it is God we're listening to. And he uses men. When you have questions and you're seeking God about it, I believe that God can put people in your path to answer those questions, which I think is super exciting because it's happened to us a lot. So I want to remind us, let me see what verse this is in. At, um, na, na, na. Oh yeah, so in verse 9, Paul's having a vision. That's God talking to him. That's the Holy Spirit talking to him. And in the vision, he sees a guy saying, come to Macedonia. I need your help. So someone in Macedonia was praying, God, please send help. 
And God was using a vision to put in front of Paul to say, somebody needs your help in Macedonia. So Paul had to, to yield to the Holy Spirit, yield his obedience, because he may have, he obviously wanted to go to Asia, but he had to yield his obedience to the Holy Spirit and to this vision that he knew came from God and head to Macedonia. So that's just what he did. And again, our key point is listen to the Holy Spirit and go the way he's shown us, even if we don't know why or what's going to happen there. Okay, so when he gets there, though, you can see by the following verses, a lot of people didn't really want him there. Even though he knew somebody was praying and there was a reason for him to be there, a lot of people didn't want him there. Even in verse 9, 19, I mean, when the owners, so this was after Paul had had um, rebuked the evil spirit out of this young lady that was um, bringing her owner's profits. But when her owners discovered that their hope of profit was gone, they caught hold of Paul and Silas and dragged them before the authorities in the marketplace where trials are head, heard, held. <laughs> I got that word. Um, they were more interested in their profits or what they were losing from their profits than they were about being set free from the evil one. That's sad. They didn't want him there. Let's see. Yeah. Don't be a Okay. So they drug him in and the people in the in the town, they all agreed together with the rulers that yeah, these guys are bad. They need to be thrown into jail. So they were thrown into jail. So where's this person that prayed? Maybe he's still somewhere praying. But we, you know, Paul and the people with him had to trust the Holy Spirit that they were in the right place doing the right thing, even though they were drugged to jail. And then when they got in, they were in jail, and verse 25 says that they were praying and singing hymns of praise to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. They were praising God, and they weren't being quiet if other people were listening. So that's another key point for us. We don't need to be ashamed to praise God. We want to praise him from the rooftops. That'll help other people point them to Jesus, bring them alongside us in the presence of God. It's a beautiful thing to praise. And verse 27 never seen this before and I'm so excited that God showed God showed this to me today because I believe somebody's going to be helped either today or another day if they watch later but listen to this when the jailer startled out of his sleep saw that the prison doors were open he drew his sword and was on the point of killing himself because he supposed that the prisoners had escaped I never equated that to committing suicide but let's think about how the jailer felt. He felt hopeless. He felt um, like a failure because his job was to, to protect these men, not to keep them safe, but to keep them from escaping. He had failed. In his eyes, he had failed at what he'd been sent to do. And in these days, he could have been persecuted. Maybe his whole family could have been punished because he didn't keep these guys in jail. He must have been afraid. So again, what is he feeling? He's feeling like a failure. He's feeling hopeless. He's feeling scared. And where are all these thoughts coming from? They're all coming from the evil one. He, he may not have been aware of all that, but, but we are aware of all this. We have the benefit of the Bible and seeing all these things pass in that have pa happened in the past. And we can learn from them. He was about to commit suicide because he'd had these feelings and he was in a dark place but it goes on to say in verse 28 but Paul shouted do not harm yourself for we're all here how did Paul know to even shout to even say we're all here it was dark in there so dark you couldn't see and that's why the jailer had to call later for lights to be brought in but Paul again had to listen to the Holy Spirit. He had to hear that up inside of himself. Shout! Shout! This man, this jailer, maybe he's the one that had been praying to send help. 
We don't know who was praying. Maybe more than one person was praying. But obviously God cared for this jailer. So we go on to see that Paul shouted and the man didn't kill himself. And then as we go on, we see that the jailer was saved. His family was saved. They were baptized. They were a blessing to Paul. They fed him and cleaned up his wounds and the people that were with him. All because Paul listened to the Holy Spirit. And all because we listened to the Holy Spirit. That same Holy Spirit, like we saw in chapter 15, verse 9, he made no difference between us and them. God loves all of us. And the Holy Spirit's going to speak up inside of all of us. We have to listen and, and yield our obedience like chapter. Chapter 16, verse 1, when Timothy's mother, it says she yielded her obedience. And obviously Paul yielded his obedience because he did what God was showing him to do. Now, the last key point I want to bring up, well, actually this isn't the last one. I want to go back to verse 28 when Paul shouted. And I want to ask you, who needs your shout? The jailer needed Paul's shout. Who needed your shout? What did that shout do? Paul's shout, what did that do? It stopped the jailer from committing suicide. There are possibly people in our path today or tomorrow or, or someday in the future. We don't know, but we have got to be committed to hearing from the Holy Spirit and shout when he tells us to shout. It may be a quiet shout. It may be a hug shout. In either case, however it comes out, it's a shout of God's love. However they're going to receive it. People need to hear that God loves them. They need to hear that it's not hopeless. People need to hear your shout. And that's why we take his anointing, which is his love, his word, his hope, and we take it to our world. We've got to take our place and take it to our world because people need our shout. That's my key. We need to hear from the Holy Spirit and we need to shout because some people need to hear that. Maybe maybe you need to hear that. So I'm shouting to you today. You're not alone. God is not thinking that I'm better than you or your brother's better than you. God is saying he made no difference. God's saying he gave you the Holy Spirit. God is saying he loves you enough to send his son so that you could be saved. So we want to keep shouting his love. Who needs your shout today? Remember that. Okay, verse 31 says, and we're in chapter 16, of course. Verse 31 says, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Give yourself up to him. Take yourself out of your own keeping and entrust yourself into his keeping. That's one for a note card right there. If you do this, if you take note cards and write scriptures on them and put them on the mirror and on the door and in the car and everywhere, this is a good one for you. So again, chapter 16 in Acts, verse 31 in the Amplified, and I'm going to read this little part right here. It says, Take yourself out of your own keeping, because you aren't very good at it. Take yourself out of your own keeping and entrust yourself into his keeping because he knows what's best. That is very important in verse 31. And then we go on and, and uh, so the, the magistrates, the head people of that area, they call the jailer and they say, okay, well, go ahead and release them. And Paul's like, mm -mm, no, you, you drug us in here in public. Now you release us in public. Now, do you think that is because Paul wanted to be praised? He wanted to be out in the limelight. He wanted people to see that he's good and all this stuff. That is not his agenda at all. Paul wanted God to be glorified. Paul wanted the gospel to be preached. Paul wanted people to see that God loves them. And by doing this very thing, by demanding that he be released in public, it brought people together. And even though the magistrates still asked them to leave, God was glorified. And it was what needed to happen. Paul wanted to point to God and give glory to God. And that's what we're to do because I'm telling you, when we listen to the Holy Spirit, 
And when we give that shout of praise to him and that shout of love to people around us, God's glorified. And that's important. We, we don't want to just say, yes, I heard from the Holy Spirit. Isn't this great how good this is going? We want to continue that by saying, it's God in me, the Holy Spirit in me. He wanted you to be delivered. We love him. He loves us. We're going to give all glory to him. We're going to yield our obedience to him. We're going to look to him. We're going to be convinced that Jesus is the Messiah. So take those key points with you today. Listening to the Holy Spirit. Be someone's shout and yield yourself. Uh, the other one. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Yield to his obedience. Be somebody else's shout and get yourself out of your own keeping and entrust yourself to his. Remember those and remember that God loves you very important and he loves everybody you come around. God loves you. We love you. And Jesus is Lord. Now take your place as you take his anointing to your world. Have a good weekend. Go to church on Sunday. Join in live with us or come here with us. And we'll see you for more Key Points on Monday. Bye-bye.